This lecture starts chapter 13, which is all about buying merchandise. So chapter 12 focused on the steps in the process that buyers go through to determine what and how much merchandise to buy. So after creating our assortment plan, forecasting our sales, planning the flow of merchandise, we actually have to acquire that merchandise. We have to purchase it. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to start by talking about the different merchandise branding options that are available to retailers. We're going to discuss the issues involved with acquiring merchandise. And we're going to talk about the importance of developing relationships with vendors. So the first thing we're going to talk about is our brand alternatives. Buyers face a strategic decision about the mix of national brand products and private label products that they should offer in each category. And there are really three types of brand alternatives that retailers can consider. The first being national brands <clears throat> or manufacturers brands would be another name for that, but national brand products. And these products are designed, produced, and marketed by a vendor and they're sold to a retailer. So the vendor is responsible for developing the merchandise. They're responsible for producing it with a consistent quality. And they're also responsible for building a marketing program to establish a brand image for those products. So some examples of national brands. Charmin toilet paper. Tervis tumblers. Pampers cruisers. Duracell batteries, Tide laundry detergent, Crest toothpaste. All of these are national brand products. A lot of times, vendors will use an umbrella brand, and we're still talking about national brands here, but a, a vendor will use an umbrella brand associated with their company and then have sub-brands for each product. So for example, Kellogg's is an umbrella brand. Their sub-brands are Cocoa Krispies, Fruit Loops, Townhouse, Cheez-Its, Pop-Tarts, Frosted Flakes, Nutrigrain, Right Bites. The list goes on and on and on. Um, if you think about another umbrella brand, think of Ford. The sub-brands would be the Ford Focus, the Ford F-150, and all of the other models of cars. So a lot of times, vendors will use individual brand names for their product categories, and they don't directly associate their brand with their companies. For example, Procter & Gamble is a brand of a company, but Procter & Gamble, did you know they, they produce Imes Pet Food, Crest Toothpaste, Vicks NyQuil, and Swiffer? Um, Johnson & Johnson is a parent company who uses individual brand names for their products, such as Band-Aid, Benadryl, Neutrogena. Okay, so they don't actually use their company name. They create other national brand names for their product to help build a brand image for those products. Now let's talk about store brands. Um, store brands are the second brand alternative that a retailer can carry in their establishment. Uh, store brands are also called private label brands. You'll see both used interchangeably. And these are products who are developed by the retailer. Um, oftentimes, they will have a manufacturer produce those products, and we're going to talk about the sourcing process for store brands later in this chapter. Um, but store brands are products developed by the retailer. So the retailer will develop and design the specifications for the product, and they'll work with the manufacturer to produce it. Uh, so sometimes um, national brand vendors will develop special versions of their product for retailers, uh, but the most common type of store brand is when the retailer develops it themselves. So a couple examples of store brands, Private Selection at Kroger, Archer Farms at Target, American Rag for Macy's, and great value for Walmart. So we already talked about private label um, or unique merchandise as a way to build customer loyalty, to build a competitive sustainable advantage. Um, but we're going to go a little bit more into detail on some of those store brands and the advantages of having them um, in your establishment. So some advantages 
to carrying national brands first before we talk about store brands. An advantage to carrying national brands in your store. Um, national brands, their image builds traffic flow. So like we talked about with national brands, the manufacturer works to create a marketing program to increase, to enhance brand image. And that brand image builds traffic flow to your retail establishment. National brands, having them reduces your selling and promotional expenses. Because again, they're already well known in the marketplace and you don't have to spend as much as you, as much of your money um, promoting and selling those items. These items are desired by customers. Customers have an affinity for certain products, right? So for me, it's Jif peanut butter. That's the only peanut butter I'll buy, and I'm gonna buy it regardless of what store I'm in, right? It's a, it's a desired brand by the consumer. Um, there's also less financial risk to the retailer. Um, when we talk about less financial risk, um, national brands give the retailer a lot more options for products that go unsold. Uh, so they might have the opportunity to return those items to the vendor, um, or they uh, might have the option to um, work with the vendor on some advertising allowances. Um, and then in general, uh, the retailer doesn't have to pay the manufacturing costs for those products. Now let's talk about a couple limitations of carrying national brands in your store. It does limit your flexibility. Um, national brand vendors often dictate how their products should be displayed, advertised, and priced. And so that limits the retailer with what they can do in the store. You're going to have a lot lower margin on national brand products. So if you think about this, um, you're going to have lower margins in the first place because you're going to have to pay the vendor in order to bring those products in your store and they're going to charge you a set price. And while that price might be negotiable, um, in general, they're not going to give, they're not going to come down too far because then they would have to do that for all of their suppliers or all of their retailers and that manufacturer still needs to make a profit. You're also going to have lower margins because you're not going to be able to sell those items at a premium. Uh, Jif peanut butter. I can get it at Kroger, I can get it at Walmart, I can get it at the Piggly Wiggly, I can get it at Food Depot. I can get my Jif peanut butter in a lot of places. I can even get my Jif peanut butter at Walgreens and CVS. So um, individual retailers aren't able to charge as much on these national brand products because of the competitive landscape. And so along with that, uh, with national brands, a retailer is very vulnerable to competitive pressures. So private label, oh, they're all there already. Um, when we talk about advantages of private label, it is that unique merchandise. Um, so you do, you can build customer loyalty because it's the only place you can get that product. Um, the exclusivity of the product boosts store loyalty. So if you are adamant about having uh, private selection bread, which is fantastic by the way, the only place you can get that is Kroger. And so that exclusivity guarantees that I'm going to be loyal to Kroger because that's where I can buy my bread. An advantage to having private label is that it makes it very difficult for customers to price shop because the product is not exactly the same. It's unique. And so it makes it difficult to find an exact comparable product at another location. Private label brands are also do have higher margin uh, because you are able to charge a little bit of a premium, uh, especially when the cost to manufacture those products can be very low. And so they often generate higher margins for the retailer than your national brand merchandise. A few limitations, however, you might be able to charge a little bit higher price or you might be able to um, get your cost per product a little low. But the upfront requires significant investment in design and manufacturing of those products. A lot of times, you have to have an expert in developing a brand. And so this could be in hiring new employees in-house. It could consist of hiring an outside firm. Um, it could consist of, of working with both um, internal employee set and a third party. And so that expertise, um, if you don't have it, you're not going to be successful with your private brand. 
A limitation is that it's difficult to sell your excess merchandise. What happens if you manufacture a private label product and it just doesn't sell? Well, it's very difficult to get rid of because if customers don't want it, they're not going to buy it. And um, when we talk about, again, talk about liquidation in Chapter 14, um, it's very difficult to liquidate excess merchandise for private label brands. Um, and I have an asterisk by this last limitation. And the fact that it's less desirable for customers, private label um, has come a long way. Store brands have improved greatly, uh, but there is still a bit of a risk that private label is less desirable for customers. A lot of times with private label, people assume it's going to taste different or it's going to taste worse or it's of a lower quality because it's store brand. Uh, that is absolutely not the case. Um, in fact, a lot of store label brands, especially when you get to the premium store level brands, they taste just as good, if not better, than the national brand merchandise. But there still is a little bit of a stigma on those products, which can make them less desirable. So I want to know, tell me, do you prefer national brands or store brands? What do you shop for and why? I've already told you in this in this lecture alone, um, I'm a Jif peanut butter girl. So that's I will always buy national brand for Jif peanut butter. Um, but I just started buying the Kroger brand of cereal and it tastes exactly like the national brand cereal. So I'm a lot less um, flexible when it comes to my peanut butter than I am my cereal from national and store brands. So tell me, uh, do you prefer national brands or store brands and why do you prefer them? Uh, does it tie back to the advantages and limitations of each or is it just a historical shopping pattern for you?